And we are live on the MLB Talk 101 once again. What is up, guys? Brian Danoff here, joined by Gershon Rabinowitz and a very special guest here tonight, the Yankees' 2012 first-round draft pick, Ty Hensley, uh, out of Oklahoma. Uh, he is a tremendous talent, and we are so thrilled to have him on tonight. Ty, how is it going, man, and how are you feeling uh, as spring training approaches? Good. Uh, just glad that glad that uh, you know my re and all that stuff is over, and uh, just uh, excited to get to playing uh, actual baseball again. <laughs> yeah, I know it's funny because you know it seems like the injury bug caught every single level of the Yankees uh, organization last season. Didn't escape, you know, the majors, and they were ravaged by injuries, and same throughout the whole minor league system. So, um, you know, how has the rehab gone? Do you see yourself getting on the mound in Tampa when? Pitchers and catches report in a few weeks. Uh, yes, everything. Uh, my rehab. I think technically I finished my uh, rehab um, program or whatever it was uh, um, back in October. So I've been everything's been pretty much normal um, since then. But uh, it's taken kind of like a little transition phase, just uh, kind of kind of getting my whole body back to normal and like feeling as good as what it did before. Um, it just took a while, and I think that uh, really over the past one two months, it's just like it's felt better than I ever in my entire life. So I'm excited about that, and I actually am throwing my first bullpen tomorrow. Wow, that's huge! Good for you, man. All right, Ty, your injury was similar to the one that Alex Rodriguez suffered before the 2009 season when he had a hip surgery. Ironically, your doctor is the same doctor that repaired Alex. What type of rehab does a pitcher go through when recovering from an injury of that sort as opposed to a position player? Um, well, actually, it helps because I rehabbed with him quite a bit before he actually went back and started playing. So I kind of got an idea of what like the later stages and uh, process would be all about. And I also had, uh, uh, I'm sure you all are familiar with uh, Rob Sagan. He was in double-A with Trenton. Mm -hmm. and he had uh, the same, same surgeries as I did. So, um, really, it just... It wasn't so much the the surgery wasn't any different. Obviously, it was just more like the rehabilitation process for uh, position players was more uh, was more widespread, whereas a pitcher was just more more uh, specific as you know that you need to uh, to pitch. So, when you weren't rehabbing last year, what did you do to pass the time, and how frustrating was it that you were unable to pitch the entire season last year? Um. Well. Be honest with you. Last year was uh, was really tough for me. Um, just, I mean, obviously it would have been my first full season playing baseball, and uh, um, you know, I feel like if I was playing baseball the whole time, the time would have passed a lot quicker. It would have been a lot more fun. But uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, that didn't happen, and uh, it uh, it definitely took longer than I thought it would. There were some uh, there were some complications with it, but uh, I mean, I'll uh, I'll I'll, I'll uh, fill everybody in whenever. Uh, whenever uh, the right time is for that. But, I mean, look, the good thing is I'm, I'm healthy now and everything's good. And, um, you know, it, it, was just, it was just real frustrating. I, did, I actually uh, got to get a lot closer to God and, um, you know, and um, just really kind of get in touch with my body and, and uh, in my life. So that's really, honestly, it was very, very boring here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, and you know that's great to hear, man. And uh, you know, I'm sure you're asked a lot, but you know, drafted uh, 30th overall in the 2012 draft at a Santa Fe high school uh, by the New York Yankees. Got a 1.2 million dollar signing bonus, so uh, a nice chunk of cash to uh, you know go with you as you started out your baseball career. Um, you know, I just wanted to ask. Uh, let's rewind back to that day. I mean, I'm sure, as I said, it's been asked at nauseum, but. Um, what was it? What was your reaction? What was it like when you got drafted by the Yankees? I'm sure it's an experience that you know is 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 ten, is ten cent, and and you were probably you know worried and you know wondering where you'd get picked and all that. Um, so what was it like that day? Because certainly it's an experience um, many have gotten to experience, but you know only only you know the select few get to go in the first round. So what was that like? Well, honestly, it was just a just a huge uh, world of emotions because. I mean, the first first part of it, you know, I thought thought I had a chance to go here and chance to go here, and it didn't happen. And so, really, the first kind of emotions I had was was a kind of you know a little easiness, a little little nervousness, and mm -hmm. um, but you know, as uh, 
as it went on, I kind of fell down a little bit, even though with each pick, my my nerves kind of settled in a little bit more. But, um, <laughs> you know, when I finally got the call saying they were going to pick me and that this whole this whole, uh, this whole spiral could stop, um, you know, I was really, I was really happy. And uh, I don't know, I just, I teared up, gave my, all my family a hug, and it was probably one of the coolest moments of my life and something I'll definitely remember forever. So. Yeah, and baseball has always been a focus in your life, really has been a focal point in your life. I mean, your dad was drafted by the Houston Astros in 85, he didn't sign, that was out of high school, and then in 88 he was drafted in the second round, he pitched three years in the minor leagues, he blew out his arm, he's coaching in college now. How much of an influence was your dad when you decided to pursue a career in baseball? Um, really, he was everything. Uh, obviously, he didn't. He didn't. He never forced it down my throat, or right. um, you know, made me say say that I had to play or whatever. But um, he uh, he helped me have a better understanding of what the game is all about, and mm -hmm. um, uh, just just coached me how to play the game the right way. Um, and um, I don't know. He's he's definitely the biggest factor in my baseball career by far. And to this, I mean, to this day, he still is because he's he's just so knowledgeable. And um, I don't know. It's just something I definitely don't take for granted. And uh, I'm very lucky to have. And the Yankees, they offered you a 1.6 million dollar signing bonus. As Brian mentioned, actually mentioned the 1.2 million dollar signing bonus when you got drafted. That was back in 2012. Then it dropped to one point from 1.6 to 1.2 after the Yankees noticed the shoulder. At abnormality in the MRI. Did the MRI concern you at all since it went undetected for so long? Hmm. Uh, no, that's a good question, but no, not at all. I mean, honestly, it was one of those things that just like, you know, those pictures aren't even percent accurate all the time. And, right. And the fact that I've never been sore or hurt or, you know, gone 20 years without without any arm problems or anything of that nature. Um, I don't know. I think that pretty much speaks for itself. I mean, there's no reason to pay attention to any kind of picture or or uh, or X-ray or whatever whatever it is, unless it, unless it's bothering you. Yeah, it might and, have been. Uh, it might have, yeah. I'm sorry. It might have been concern on the Yankees' part. I was thinking because they've had a lot of pitchers that they've drafted that have suffered injuries later on that they draft in the yeah. first round, guys, you know, even guys like Java Chamberlain and, you know, Alan Horn, Jeremy Bleich, and then later on some other pitchers, Andrew Brackman, of course. And I think the Yankees were a big concern. I guess they were trying to look out for your safety. I mean, you were drafted out of high school. I think you were about 17, 18 years old. So just, I guess they were trying to protect an investment there. And, of yeah, course, and you, you actually committed to Ole Miss prior to getting drafted. That's where you committed. It looked like you were going to go there. And usually when a player goes, actually steps in, steps in for their first college course, they lose their draft eligibility. Now take us through the process before that happens, before you, before you decide to take your first college course. What goes through a player's mind from the point that they commit to when they get drafted and how you came to that decision? Um, oh, you mean the decision after, after I got picked or, yeah, or yeah. before I got Okay. Yeah, so, yeah I mean, how so about a little bit of both? Okay. Okay. Well, I I didn't pay any attention to the draft at all um, before it happened because obviously my dad being a college coach and having gone through the whole process himself, he really helped me out with that. And then the last thing I needed to do was sit there and worry about that because the minute you start worrying about that, just things things uh, things don't really fall into place like they should. So right. I honestly just told myself I'm going to school. I'm going to school the whole time. So um, nothing changed there. And then after I got picked. You know, obviously, you have to um, make a decision that's best for you and your family, and and ultimately, what's best for your career. Um, and it took me a long time to decide that because I don't. I mean, I had opportunity to go to Ole Miss and and play uh, play a corner position and be a switch hitter um, and continue wow. that route. I, mean, I firmly believe that if I would have stuck with uh, with hitting, and I would have done that out of uh, out of college instead of. Uh, um, I mean, it's one of those things. Ultimately, I just did what was best for me, and I felt like that in the pro ball and, um, you know, making my career uh, as a pitcher. And it's funny, Ty, that you mentioned about, you know, your hitting prowess and that you were a switch hitter. In high school, you put up some impressive numbers hitting. Your senior season, 10 home runs, 42 RBIs as a switch hitter, 
some, I remember on the MLB Network, right after you got drafted, comparing your hitting ability to former Diamondbacks pitcher Micah Owens, who, remember, was a very good hitting pitcher in the mid-2000s. Do you en- did you envision yourself becoming a position player ever instead of pitching or maybe down the road deciding maybe to become a position player if it doesn't work out with pitching for, for any reason? Yeah. Um, actually, my freshman, sophomore, and even some of my junior year, I was – I was a better prospect as a catcher. Um, really? <laughs> believe it or not, a catcher. Um, but uh, I kind of grew up, grew a little taller, about 6'4", and um, it was just one of those things. It's hard to stay. It's hard to just get a big body about the plate, period. I mean, you look at Joe Maurer, he's having to go play uh, first base now. So Yeah. Um, no, I, I, yeah, I mean, Dad honestly wanted me to be a, a, a position player. Uh, just because I get to play every day, and and uh, you know, generally they have they have uh, longer careers because you know there's not so much um, pressure on the arm every single every single pitch every single play. But um, and then uh, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things. If 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 I mean, Lord willing, pitching. I mean, hopefully pitching works out great. Uh, I mean, it's one of those things that I I suppose yeah I could fall back on. But I, I don't really. I definitely don't really think about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely true. Um, and you know that that is really unique because normally, I mean, well, as, throughout high school and even in little league, the best pit player is almost always the best pitcher and also you know the, the cleanup hitter. And it's funny that you know they mentioned that you were such a great hitter back then. Um, but you know, um, getting back to when you were younger specifically, I mean, of course you're 20 years old. You're not at old by any stretch. Um, you know, but growing up, I mean, you grew up through a, a pretty um, controversial and pretty, you know, still pretty exciting, fun part of uh, era of Major League Baseball. Uh, were there any players specifically that you related to and, and tried to emulate and be like as you were, you know, playing uh, out your little league and semi-pro career? Yeah, um, pitching-wise, it was always Roger Clemens. I mean, I just, I don't know, my dad always spoke really highly of him and Mm-hmm. Um, I just watched him every single every single chance I could. Um, I mean, really tough guy to emulate because he was so dang good, so precise. So I mean, so I don't know, whole lot of words you can use to describe Rocket. But um, yeah, definitely. But, I mean, it, it, as far as hitting and everything, I think Chipper Jones was a good comparison for me because he was a switch hitter, and um, I think that's where kind of where my dad got that idea to make me a switch hitter before uh, before high school. And with so many legendary players coming out of Oklahoma, including Mickey Mantle and Bobby Mercer, you actually wear number 17 because Mercer wore one with the Yankees and Mantle wore number seven with the Yankees. What does it mean for you to be drafted by the Yankees and to come from the Sooner State and be, um, among one, I, um, I be say, one of those players? I just, I mean, there's definitely, uh, there's definitely some honor, honor taken there and, and, and definitely some pride just um, knowing that those, those great players – are from the same place that you are and just follow the same steps and, you know, w- went on to have really successful careers. And, um, I don't know, I, it, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, uh, to be, uh, to be from the same place as those guys. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, uh, it, it's kind of interesting because, you know, with, you know, you are a pitching prospect in the Yankees organization and we just saw them, you know, of course, spend the big money on bringing in a guy named Masahiro Tanaka. I'm not sure if any of you guys have heard of him yet. Um, <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. Of course, he's been all over the place. But, um, you know, it's it's really tough when you're a pitcher to, to really get through all those levels of, of the minor leagues and make it to the majors. And, I mean, it's it's especially true with the Yankees. You know, they, they give very small opportunities normally to their young arms. I mean, we've seen recently guys like David Phelps, Adam Warren come up through the system, make an impact. But, um you know, you said you were drafted at high school and you had committed to Ole Miss. I mean, what made you decide to, you know, take that risk of potentially either getting traded or, you know, maybe never ending up in the Bronx as much as, you know, that is that is a hope for you, of course. But what made you, you know, want to be a Yankee and what made you think that, you know, it, it would have been better off for you to just, uh, you know, maybe hold out, go to college and come back as maybe a, a power-hitting, you know, corner infielder? <laughs> um. A lot of factors played into that. Um, I think I think the biggest thing for me is that uh, you know it was an opportunity with the most prestigious organization in all of sports. Um, right. In 
right, there is that risk that, you know, you, you could get traded. I mean, there's obviously good good potential that that could happen. Um, and there's also good potential that you could never get. But I don't know. I just it, – it just felt right for me. Um, and, you know, if you can make it – if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. And <laughs> if you're – yeah, if you're – you know, if you do do well for the Yankees, I mean, you're you're a baseball you're a baseball legend like forever, and I, I that 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 part really intrigued me a lot. So, I just mean, a lot of opportunity, a lot of opportunity there. Yeah, definitely. And and you know, being drafted by the Yankees, um, I remember watching on the S Network. I think you you did make the trip to Yankee Stadium right after you were drafted, right? Yes, I did. And so, you know, I was wondering, you know, what was that experience like? I'm sure that even helped you even more be sure that the pinstripes is where you wanted to be. I mean, did you talk to anyone, you know, specifically, maybe a guy like a Derek Jeter or Mariano Rivera, did they give you any tips and encourage you even more that playing here is is the best place in the world? Um, well, uh, the night that I was drafted, um, CC Sabathia called me and, um, wow. you know, just uh, said, congr- I mean, it was so surreal uh, right. at the time. and. Obviously, I, w- I was already in like a shock of everything that happened, but you know, he just called me and told me congratulations, and uh, you know, hope hope everything works out. Um, but when I did go to Yankee Stadium, I, I had already made the decision to sign, so right. I got to meet pretty much everybody and um, get to know all them pretty well. But uh, it was just it was surreal um, standing there like on the field before the game, getting introduced to everybody, and honestly. Definitely probably the, the coolest day of my life. And uh, the next time I put those pinstripes on, it's uh, it's because I earned them. Yeah, that's that's definitely true. And, um, you know, uh, I wanted to focus on a serious topic here. I've seen on, you know, some websites and some interviews you've done, you know, you're a very charitable person, you know, very religious guy. Um, and, you know, it's great to hear. And um, one of the things that stood out to me when I read an interview that you did is that you're a part of the B. Edmund organization, which um, I've I've just looked into over the past few weeks, you know, preparing to interview you, and um, it's it's a it's an organization that I believe helps try to prevent uh, teen suicide in Oklahoma, and um, you know, is there anything you'd like to say about that or any updates you know that you could give on the charitable things you are doing to help your community and you know help the betterment of Oklahoma? Yeah. Um, well. Uh... Yeah, it was just one of the, was one of those ideas uh, that uh, uh, Edmund Family Council, uh, you know, we kind of collaborated together and came up with, um, just solely because of the fact that suicide, suicide is definitely one of those things that has affected me, uh, you know, quite a bit throughout mm-hmm. my life. I've had friends and you know brothers of friends, and it's just you just you just see how something like that not only just affects the immediate. people, People, everybody around them, and it's just—it's selfish, and it's—it's—it's it's, it's wrong, and it's just one of—it's definitely one of those things that could be prevented. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we just came up with an idea that you know we uh, we could make an app on a phone because, especially for teenagers, because I mean all the teenagers are on their phone nowadays, right? And uh, so we came up with an app that not only you could call. Um, for for like anonymous help, but you could get like sports scores and um, you know bus routes, AT information. So basically, it's like an all-in-one kind of app. So people have to feel so um, uh, what's the word uh, nervous downloading it, I guess, because it's not just for suicides, for a lot of other things too. Um, right. But uh, no, we we raised our forty thousand um, dollars to build the app, and it it, it, it was built. Um, I actually got it on my phone. And uh, I, I think uh, I think it'll be good, and I think we'll you know eventually work its way up and uh, help people, and maybe even spread out to the whole state of Oklahoma, and then eventually maybe spread to the country. You know, that's just that's just uh, wishful thinking, and um, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, that's huge, and that's honestly that's great to hear that you're you know at such a young age, you know, that you see guys who get involved with charities and and start doing things once they make it big and once they make you know their name known across the country but you're you're already involved and that's great to hear um, you know one last question for before we let you go you know it's been great having you on um, you know what are your goals for this upcoming season I mean do you are you you know looking towards the future and saying well if I pitch really well this year maybe I'll get to advance to another level 
or are you really just trying to get back into that rhythm of pitching every fifth day and just staying consistent and, and more importantly, staying healthy? Well, uh, you know, I, I can't I can't control uh, at all where they put me, mm -hmm. how long they put me there, um, how many innings I throw, all that stuff. But whatever I can control, um, Lord willing, such as staying healthy and making quality pitches and making my innings count and making outings count, that's 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 all I can really hope for. My goal is just to, uh, you know, live pitch to pitch, make the best possible pitches I can, and uh, you know. Um, keep uh, keep getting better in some aspect of my game, and uh, and the main goal obviously is just stay healthy. That's that. I, if I if I stay healthy this year, it, it's already a win. But um, another goal is just to make quality pitches and um, just just to sort of kind of repeat everything and get back in the flow of everything. Yeah, I mean definitely. I think that's the mantra of the whole Yankees organization this year: to stay healthy and. Um, you know, looks like there's a lot of things um, that are in your future, and, you know, I can't wait to hopefully see you one day in pinstripes at Yankee Stadium. I'm sure, you know, being from New York, uh, Gershon and I, you know, we're really looking forward to it and, and really hoping that everything goes well this year and um, that you get back on track and, uh, as I said, one day end up in the Bronx. So, Ty, thanks again for joining us. Uh, you can follow Ty Hensley at, at Ty Hensley 17 As Gershon said, Hensley wears 17 because Bobby Mercer wore number one with the Yankees, and Mickey Mantle wore number seven with the Yankees. Both guys from Oklahoma, as is Ty. And we hope to have you on again someday, you know, maybe when you are with the Yankees. And, uh, you know, best of luck to you this season. Hey, I best appreciate that, guys. Thanks for everything. Y'all have a great night. You too. Have a great night, Ty. All right.